Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna. Um, so this is not the actual verse uh, we're doing the class on. It's the one preceding it. So I'll just read it and then we'll move on to the next one. Uh, and we can do that together. Again. Agyayayvam gunandoshan mayadishtan. No, it's okay. The, the next verse. Mayadishtan apisvakan dharman santyajya yaksarvan mangpajetsa chasattama. Ramananda Roy continued. Occupational duties are described in the religious scriptures. If one analyzes them, he can fully understand their qualities and faults and then give them up completely to render service unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Such a person is considered a first-class man. Um, so we've got to do the next verse, actually. So um, this is the one we are. We'll repeat. Sabadama Parityajja Sarvadamang Parityajja Mam Ekam Sharanam Braja Mam Ekam Sharanam Braja Ahang Tang Sava Pape 
A hung tom sava pa pe bio. Moksha is yami masucha. Moksha is yami masucha. Anyone else? Savadam amparityaja. Mame kang sharanam praja. Kang sava pa pe bio. Ladies. Savadamam Parityatya Mami Kam Charanam Braja Savadamam Parityatya Mami Kam Charanam Braja Sava pa pe bio. Sarvadaman. All kinds of occupational duties. Parityaja. Giving up. Mam e kam. Unto me only. Sharanam. As shelter. Vraja. Go. Aham. I. Tvam, unto you, sarva pa pe pya, from all the reactions of sinful life, moksha yis yami, will give liberation, ma, don't, shucha, worry. As stated in scripture, Bhagavad Gita 1866, after giving up all kinds of religious and occupational duties, if you come to me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and take shelter, I will give you protection from all of life's sinful reactions. Do not worry. Please repeat. As stated in scripture, after giving up all kinds of religious and occupational duties, If you come to me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and take shelter, I will give you protection from all of life's sinful reactions. Do not worry. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. In this connection, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami instructs in his book, Mana Shiksha 2, Nadharmam nartamam shruti gana niruktam kilakuru vrajay radha krishna prachura paricharyam iha tanu. He has thus enjoined that we should not perform religious or irreligious activities as prescribed in the Vedas. The best course is to engage always in the service of Lord Krishna and Radharani. That is the perfection of everything in this life. Uh, similarly, in Srimad Bhagavatam 4.29.46, it is said by Narad Muni, Yada Yazyanu Grinati Bhagavanatma Bhavita Sajahati Matim Loke Vede Cha Parinishtitam. When one actually takes to the loving service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he gives up all duties in the material world, as well as all duties prescribed by the Vedic literatures. In this way, one is fixed in the service of the Lord. So we're going to explore this purport uh, by Srila Prabhupada and the one that he references in this purport um, and try to understand uh, what's being said here. That uh, Ramananda Roy is saying 
uh, uh, he's first of all in context. Raman under Roy is answering questions posed by Lord Chaitanya, and um, so he's asking him what is the goal of life essentially, and, and Raman under is taking it, you know, step by step, going up higher and higher, um, and he's got to a point where, uh, as we see a couple of verses ago, he said that uh, if we analyse the uh, the faults and you know the, the different qualities of um, dharma, we can give them up. So, what is he talking about? And um, you know, when should we be doing this? At what point? So let's explore that. Um, but before I um, launch into it, I just wanted to say how I'm going to do this. I, I'm going to put this purple up. As you can see, we've got it up here, um, and. Um, and then we're going to just try and understand what Srila Prabhupada's saying, uh, first of all. And I'm going to give you the opportunity, uh, ask one or two of you here in the audience each time we have um, the purple up, to uh, see if you can understand what Prabhupada's saying in your own words. Um, you know, don't just repeat, you know, the uh, exact same words as Prabhupada, but a bit slowly or something. But actually try to get to the heart of what he's saying and repeat it. Um, and I just want to say before uh, we, we do that, that this is actually stressed by Srila Prabhupada often. Um, the importance of not just hearing, but actually repeating what we hear. Because passive hearing is not really going to help us much. We don't engage with the subject matter. We don't um, you know, really go beyond a superficial understanding, if even we get that. I don't know if you're like me, but, you know, when I'm sitting in the class and someone's just repeatedly speaking, it's going in this ear and coming out that one, because there's not much in between to stop it from, you know, going straight through, unfortunately. So, um, but, you know, if, if, if we back up, stop, focus, and then understand you know, uh, uh, what is Prabhupada saying here and why is he saying it and how does that impact on me and what's the importance of this then we can really get something out of it and actually we can get a lot because we can mine out some real jewels that are there in Prabhupada's purports that we might otherwise miss um, if we're just going quickly through it or we're just hearing someone speaking and giving their understanding and their realizations but we don't get a chance to do that. And I mean, here's one evidence of Srila Prabhupada that Shravanam means hearing from the authority and again repeat it. This is our business. Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu, about Vishnu, not for any politician or any other man. Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu, about Krishna or Vishnu. So that is success. Hear and repeat. Hear and repeat. You haven't got to manufacture. So yes, you'll find so many directions of that nature from Srila Prabhupada um, instructing us to repeat, to discuss, basically, Shastra um, amongst ourselves. So let's try and, and do that. So this is the beginning of the purport of the verse under discussion here today. Um, and um, I'm going to call upon you um, now. I'm going to ask one of you, uh, if you would like to, in your own words, tell me what you understand Srila Prabhupada to be saying here. Let's start with uh, Madhva, because I know he's practiced at this. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's referencing Srila Raghunath Das Goswami's statement in, in the Manashiksha. And the statement is, he has thus enjoined that we should not perform religious or irreligious activities as prescribed in the Vedas. The best course is to engage always in the service of Lord Krishna and Radharani. That is the perfection of everything in life. So what I understand from that is we should understand, well, we should prioritize always choosing what is pleasing to Radha and Krishna. There might be these distinctions between duty and religious or irreligious activities. I understand that to be duty or doing whatever you want to do versus doing your duty. And these decisions are okay, but we should always be prioritizing 
and our thought process, what's pleasing to Radha and Krishna? Okay, so you're saying um, that Prabhupada's referencing uh, Raghunath Das Goswami's book, Manashiksha, uh, and the statement there, um, you understand, it, it's uh, basically telling us that we should prioritize, you said, um, the service of Radha and Krishna. Um, so uh, we should make that our prime aim, over and above um, what's said in the Vedas. And you said that religious and irreligious acts, so you understand that to mean duty and as opposed to doing whatever we want to do, so duty or, or just sinful acts. I, I'm guessing you mean by you know just acting in whatever way we like. So uh, you said that the Vedic statements are okay, but over and above that, more, more significant, more important, is serving Radha and Krishna. You understood me perfectly. Did you want to say more? Not an understanding. Okay. Um, one of the ladies? You, you got your hand up? Would you like to have a go and pass the thing over? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, I don't want to hog it, but it's just such an incredible purport. I thought I'd have a go as well. It's an amazing purport, yeah. So irreligious activities which are prescribed in the Vedas. By the way, I really like what Madhva said, but I'm just going to add. Um, irreligious activities as prescribed in the Vedas. So there's, the Vedas tell us um, some irreligious activities we can do. And what I understand about that is that sex, intoxication, meat eating, and gambling are all <coughs> sinful activities. They're all ir irreligious. But there's prescription for them in the Vedas. Like, you know, if you want to have sex, you get married. If you want to um, have meat, you do a sacrifice for a goddess Kali at a certain, on the moonrise or something, on the full moon or one day like that, and you eat that. So there is allowance for irreligious activities in the Vedas. That's what I understand that part is referring to. Um, okay, so you picked up on this um, irreligious activities prescribed in the Vedas. What on earth does that mean? So you're saying you understand that is the, a, a reference to um, sex, life, meat, eating, intoxication. These are sinful activities. Gambling as well as the Gambling. under certain circumstances. Yeah, but the, the Vedas uh, make allowance for that um, under certain conditions, like you can eat meat by offering it to Goddess Kali on the full moon night, and you can drink after a sacrifice, Sotramani or whatever. So like that, there are some allowances. That's irreligious activities. Yeah. And religious, I understand, is being used in the, kind of like the context of Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. So you do Dharma to get Artha and Kama and Moksha. So you may give in charity, because you know by being charitable, you will um, get you know, prestige, and you'll get back by the universe. The universe will give you back, and you'll be able to be more prosperous. You know, uh, So religious activities are all those things prescribed in the Vedas, like giving charity, performing austerities, performing sacrifice, Vedic yagyas, rituals to the gods, um, which you do with the intention of getting artha, kam, or moksha. Okay. And religious activities, um, you understand dharma, of course, but dharma, which is materially motivated, um, dharma, artha, kama, moksha, so uh, with the aim of achieving these great goals of life. You want to get material gain or liberation of some sort. So Raghunath Goswami explains the Savadharma verse in his Manasiksha by saying, this tells us stop doing dharma for artha, kama, moksha, and stop engaging in sex, gambling, intoxication, and meat eating at all, and focus your energies on pleasing, on, on hearing about glorifying, remembering, worshipping Radha Krishna. Okay. So Raghunath Das Goswami's advice um, is to give up, uh, first of all, um, materially motivated religion and sinful activities uh, of all kinds, and uh, focus your attention on satisfying Krishna, Radha Krishna. Yes. That is the perfection of everything in this life. So understand, if you wanted any other kind of happiness the perfection of any happiness you might have wanted or the perfection of any goal you might have wanted, you'll get if you focus your energies on serving Radha and Krishna. You, you know, like we may think, I'll be really happy if I get rich. I'll be really happy if I have a big house. But the happiness you're really seeking, you'll get 
if you focus your attention on serving Radha Krishna. Mm. Um, so yeah, so you're saying the, um, that is the perfection of everything in this life. And so Raghunath Das Goswami is telling us that if we, um, you know, we may be seeking happiness in life, that's what we want. Everyone's trying to find happiness and, and mitigate suffering. Um, but the best way to do that, if you just simply focus on service to Radha Krishna, you'll achieve that to the highest degree. And you didn't unpack what service to Radha Krishna was. <laughs> well, service begins with hearing. It means hearing about. And it, the next thing is Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam. I forget the order after that. It's a Vandanam, Archanam. Okay. Um, so it begins with hearing. Hear about. And then, the second, Kirtanam. Repeat those glories. Glorify. So you hear about, in 2.2.30, it unpacks hearing and chanting more. It says, hearing and chanting the holy name, but also hearing and discussing books like Gita and Bhagavatam. That is okay. service of Radha Krishna. Okay. Okay, so, and uh, what is service to Radha Krishna? Well, the Angas of Bhakti. Starting with Shravanam and Kirtanam, and especially Shravanam. Um, and Kirtanam, they go together. And they go together, yeah. Uh, they must go together. And, and you cited that purple in um, Bhagavatam 2.2.30, where Prabhupada says when we speak of hearing and chanting, we don't just mean the holy name, but we also mean books like the Gita and the Bhagavatam that discussing we should hear and, and discuss, discuss them, yeah. And... and Basically, Einstein, I think this verse 2114, that verse, Shotavya, Kirtutavya, Shadeya, I think that is the, the essential that hear about, glorify, remember, meditate on, contemplate what you're hearing and discussing, and then worship. So, okay. worship, I understand, means both ritual deity worship, but also offering everything in our life to them. Okay. So, Tasmak Bharata Zavratma Bhagavanishra Shotavya, Kirtutavya, Shadeya. Jaya Puja Sunichita, that verse you're citing, um, as evidence that, uh, that everything should be done, as, um, you know, hearing and chanting and everything becomes like devotional service as an offering to the Lord. Prabhupada makes that point, right? Okay. Yeah, I, I saw it in the same way that I, the um, Madhva and my wife understood, um, that giving up religious activities means materially motivated, which, of course, uh, the evidence for that is dharma, prajata, kaitavatara, etc. So, the second verse of the Bhagavatam. Uh, yeah, and, um, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Uh, Radha Sangha, you had a question? Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, this uh, verse, I, I thought, um, following on from what she said, the I think of the pastime with the Brahmins' wives, and they had been hearing about Krishna, and um, and the husbands were doing all the religious activities. But when Krishna came, they didn't even see him or notice him. They were so into religious activities. But they had been hearing about Krishna. They hadn't seen him yet. So when he came, they were ready to serve him, and they ran and served him. So I thought that was a simple... That's what came to my mind. That, that, so you're giving that as like another sort of evidence to show the importance of hearing and superiority of it over the religious rituals of the Vedas. And the, 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 yeah, thank you. That's a nice example. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next part of the purport because this is only half of it. Um, so... I'm going to ask someone else now, see if they'd like to have a go, any bold soul here, at understanding this. You might need to break it up. Um, I mean, the, in the uh, purport, uh, I see a, a couple of points there. Um, but anyway, uh, you can, uh, anyone like to have a go, just understanding what Prabhupada is saying only, not responding or commenting or anything like that. Yeah, anyone like to have a go? Go ahead. Just, just uh, sort of say it first. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
uh, as well as all duties prescribed by Veda literatures. Yeah. So, um, so when we become devotees, Krishna, he, um, he minimizes all our uh, impious credits and um, also our, he also sometimes take away our pious credits, which um, if it's a hindrance to our devotional service, so the impious activity, or the pious activities, duties we do, which is going to cause our pious credits, uh, are no longer important as, well, as much as devotional services. Um, um, because devotional services is, is, is above all the impious and pious credit we, achieve, we do. Because um, Krishna is going to take it away anyway. Uh, if it's a hindrance to our service. Okay. So that's kind of... Uh, thank you, Prabhu. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you're saying uh, it's talking about pious and impious credits and Krishna takes them away, minimizes the impious. Well, yeah, because the duties we perform are going to give us those pious or impious credits. Yeah. Good duties or bad duties. Okay. Right? Material duties or duties according to... So everything. there's no need to do the duties... Or, you know, because Krishna's, we're not, the pious credits are, are going to be, um, like you're, you're talking about Krishna's removing our pious removing credits and impious those, credits, we're yeah. Gonna, we're going to okay. achieve by performing these duties, all those pious okay. and impious credits. Okay. Um, but of course, it's important to do your duty as well. Right. Uh, but not if it's a hindrance to your devotional service. Okay. I understand. Thank you, Of course, we have to do our duty. Yeah, we still have to do that. <laughs> not if it's a hindrance. Thank you, Prabhu. Anyone else like to have a, a go at understanding? Prabhuji, what's your name? Uh, Dr. David. Dr. David. Um, uh, for me, it uh, speaks about uh, the inner em emphasis, that our emphasis is no longer on material duties, that it's inwardly surrendered to devotional service, that because it says um, gives up all duties in the material world, and it talks about prescribed by Vedic literatures, but we still do follow Vedic literatures and we do have to act in the material world, so it's primarily on our inner em emphasis is in devotional service. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying for you it's about the, the, our inner emphasis, so our focus, our, our motivation for work is to please Krishna um, and you know, not so much on the external duties which are prescribed in the Vedas. We concentrate on serving the Lord as opposed to the external. We're not thinking so much about, you know, what we have to do within this world. We're thinking, let me please Krishna. How can I please him? What should I do for his pleasure? Which may be doing duties or whatever, you know, but it's, that's the focus, the inner focus. Yeah. Thank you, Prabhu. Any ladies? I'm going to pass it across this way. I know you want to have a Does any other ladies like to? If not, I can let them. Did I see Jagat Priya's hand going up? Yeah. <laughs> yes, so um, I, I'm a little bit stuck here, as well as the duties prescribed by the Vedic literatures. So I thought that Chintamani would elaborate on that. But <laughs> anyway, I understand that. Um, <clears throat> so when we come to devotional service, so when we perform bhakti yoga, then um, then one would naturally give up uh, the activities of the material world, you know, in the material world. Um, and also uh, the activities which are um, which are prescribed in the Vedic literature. So yeah, I, I'm not, I cannot say so much right now. It doesn't come to my mind. Yeah. So whatever is given in the Vedic literature, one, one wouldn't do that. One would rather engage just in loving devotional service in Bhakti Yoga. And when one follows Bhakti Yoga, so then one actually becomes, um, um, how do you say, fixed in the service of the Lord. So then one is um, uh, not wavered, you know. One, one, one is just concentrated on the service or in the service. Okay. So when one takes to Bhakti, uh, he, he gives up activities in the material world. Um, as you understand it, and you weren't sure about the distinction that Prabhupada was making a distinction here between um, duties in the world and duties prescribed by the Vedic literatures. 
So, but you understand that by taking to back tea, we give those up. We don't. That we don't have to. Do yeah. Now the question: How do we give up? You know, because I understand we actually uh, spiritualize them. You know, that's my understanding. So it's not that we are not working anymore, but we work for Krishna. So that it? would be a response. So that was responding. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, okay. well, we can come to that. That's that's a very good point. You want to have a go? May I? Yes. Yeah. Please. I think for me the key phrase is loving service. Because when Prabhupada talks about devotional service, he uses different kind of like modifiers. He will use the word regulative devotional service often to refer to sadhana bhaktas like ourselves. And he'll use the word loving devotional service to refer to the right mango, the perfected soul who's on the platform of, of uh, pure bhakti. Like it says, mad bhaktim labate param, you know. The person, um, Brahma Bhutta, Prasanna, Atmana, Shochatina, Kangshati, Samasa, Veshabhuteshu, Mat Bhaktim Labhateva. That, when you're on the platform of uh, knowing Krishna, complete self realization, then loving devotional service begins. So, this reminds me very much of a verse in the third, can third chapter of the Gita, where I'm just trying to find it, where Krishna says that for the self realized soul, a person who's realized his relationship with Krishna, there's no longer any obligation to perform his duties. It doesn't mean he won't do his duties, mm. but he has no obligation. He may or he may not. He gives, Krishna gives the example of King Janak, who is a self-realized soul. And in order to set the right example for others, he did his duties, but it was just to set a right example for others. He didn't require it for um, his own advancement. So when it says loving service, I understand... He's talking about when one actually gets to the stage of being established in his loving relationship with Krishna. At that time, following the rules and regulations, either of bhakti, sadhana bhakti, or of the material, it's not necessary. You may do it to set a good example, yet, yet, I try to shush down. But it's not obligated anymore. You'll do what, is, what, what Krishna wants of you to do. Mm. So you're picking up on the, um, the fact that Prabhupada says, when one takes, actually, to the loving service. Um, <clears throat> so there's a distinction between regulative sadhana bhakti and uh, loving bhava or prema bhakti when you reach that stage. Um, and then you cited Brahma Bhutta, Prasanatma, etc., mad bhaktim labhate param, that you, at that point, so you take to real bhakti, actually loving service. Um, and that means you are self-realized. You know, you're, you're, and you're, you're at a point where you're no longer obliged because in the Gita, you, in the third chapter, you, you quoted... Verse 18. Yeah, 318. 318 uh, he, he said that uh, one no longer has to perform duties uh, when he's... Um, what is the exact words of it? A self-realized man has no purpose to fulfill in the discharge of his prescribed duties. Yeah. Nor has he any reason, any reason not, not to perform to do such them, yeah. work. So Nor has he any need to depend on any other. So way. he's he's above duty or doing it or not doing it, but he may still do it. And of course, Krishna gives the example of Janaka to say that um, you should do them to set the example. Yad yad Shriti Shri Stas, he cites that there in that section, and um, and he cites himself as an example that even I am doing duties. What to speak of you or anyone else, you know? So, but the point, your, your main point you're making is that. This stage of giving up material duties uh, shouldn't be taken lightly. It's, it's when you actually achieve uh, the stage of Brahma Bhutta, you're transcendental to um, the material world. So you no longer, na sochati, na kangshati, you're not attracted to anything uh, and you're not lamenting about anything. You're not disturbed by anything in this material world. Everything, you're equipoised. Thank you very much. Oh, Mataji, yes, please. Are, are you going to do an understanding of the... Uh, of yes, I want to uh, add something, maybe, if I'm allowed, for what uh, uh, Chintamani Mataji just said. Go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> about the loving service, because I also I was contemplating on this key word, loving service, in this verse, uh, in this uh, uh, translation. And um, I wanted to say that when... He, Loving service, and uh, as Chintamani Mataji said, understanding, uh, Chintamani Prabhu said, understanding the, um, our relationship uh, with Krishna. Uh, for that, 
my addition to that would be for that we are completely depending on the mercy of the Vaishnavas. One cannot understand the relationship with Krishna and have loving service to Krishna unless they get the mercy of the Vaishnavas. And by saying Vaishnavas, I mean those who are free from anarthas and they have understood their relationship with Krishna. We're depending completely on the mercy of those. Okay. In Thank you. Uh, and that's, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's very nice. Share. Yeah, nice point. So, um, yeah, that's that's how we can uh, achieve this loving service to the Lord. Yeah, that's 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 a response. But thank you very much. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on. Yeah, I, th this would have raised questions for me. Um, you know, does this mean that I give up my Varnashram duties? Uh, what about my Grihasta duties, etc.? But I, I think um, they've been. Um, answered here because um, we we may or may not. Uh, it depends on what Krishna wants. That you you were saying that we're, we're acting simply, in, and we were discussing earlier um, to satisfy the Lord. Uh, and uh, Jagat Priya Mataji also said we spiritualize our duties by doing them for the pleasure of Krishna. So, of course, in the case of Arjuna. Um, he continued to act as a Kshatriya after hearing the Gita and Krishna's instructions, but he was now doing it not because he was initially his, his, his motive for, for um, doing or not wanting to do uh, his duty was he didn't like the result that was going to come. So he was attached to the result. So he was doing it for himself, selfishly. Um, so that has to be given up. That's what has to be given up, as I understand it. Not the duty necessarily. Um, but you have to give up that attachment, that desire for the results. So, but when he found out that this is what Krishna wants me to do, then he did it. And he did it in the mood of trying to please the Lord. Um, so that's the difference. So now here in this purport, Prabhupada um, is actually quoting another one, 429.46. So I thought we could have a look at that um, and see what we get out of that. So, uh, this is taken from um, that purport. Uh, Shravanam means hearing from the authority and again... Oh, sorry, this is not taken from that purport. This is it. <laughs> when a person is fully engaged in devotional service, he is favored by the Lord who bestows his causeless mercy. At such a time, the awakened devotee gives up all material activities and ritualistic performances mentioned in the Vedas. So any of the, uh, the men here like to have a go at understanding that one? Uh, in your own words? Any brave souls? <laughs> uh, yeah, at me sure. Give him the mic. Only one... Uh one example comes to my mind is... Are, are you uh, giving your understanding of Prabhupada's words? Just put yeah. it in your own words, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, my, well, what's coming to my mind is uh, the example of Madhavendra Puri. Who? Madhavendra Puri? Madhavendra Puri, Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri. yes. Uh, in that verse, I can't remember the verse. I don't know, uh, maybe you have that verse where Srila Madhavendra Puri... As he was leaving his body? No. Oh. He, he, he actually... Oh, and I give up my... Yeah. Yes. Oh, my prayers three times a day. Yeah, yeah that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, now, I, I renounce you. Yeah, because now like, I've discovered the sweet taste of serving the Lord. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's an example of someone who's done that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Anyone else who'd like to understand? Madhva, you want to give us a go? Can you pass the mic to Madhva? When a person fully engaged in devotional, when a person is fully engaged in devotional service, he is favored by the Lord who bestows his causeless mercy. At such a time, the awakened devotee gives up all material activities and ritualistic performances mentioned in the Vedas. Cal try. So when a person is fully engaged in devotional service, I understand that to mean when they are fully 
trying to dedicate their, their energy to pleasing Krishna, which I'm a little confused about, but I'll just leave it at that. He is favored by the Lord who bestows his causeless mercy. So this attracts Krishna's favor and mercy. Krishna then takes an interest in that person when they're trying to dedicate their life energy to pleasing him. So he takes an interest. He gives his causeless mercy like Atma was saying as well, the mercy. This time it's coming from Krishna, maybe through the devotees. At such a time, the awakened devotee gives up all material activities and ritualistic performances mentioned in the Vedas. So when Krishna bestows his mercy on the devotee, that sounds like it liberates that person from whatever material activities he's engaged in. He's no longer affected by those, whether they are material or ritualistic. Whatever is happening, he's not being touched by that because his activities are pure. Because he's doing it for these Krishnas, my best attempt at understanding is probably off. But. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, I mean, when we're doing understandings, it doesn't matter whether we're getting it right or wrong. We, what we do is we just read what Prabhupada has said. What does it say to me? What do I understand? We must understand something when we read it, you know. So, that, and, and it may be that it brings up confusions. You know, we read that doesn't make any sense at all. How can he say that? Or, you know, but that, makes, that completely contradicts what I read somewhere else. It doesn't matter. Bracket all of that. Just focus on what Prabhupada's saying and understand it to the best of your ability. And, and so, um, and Mavi was saying, uh, you know, when, when one is dedicated, so fully engaged in devotional service, you're saying you, you don't fully understand exactly what that means. But um, you understand it means we dedicate ourselves entirely to the service of the Lord. And when we do that, we get the causeless mercy. So that you understood meant it liberates us, you said. So um, from you know, our interest in material activities in this world uh, and the rituals and everything that go along with that. So by Krishna's mercy, we achieve detachment uh, from um, material desires, essentially, which is why we're doing our duties in the first place. And the, you know, whatever the... Varnashram rituals, etc., associated with it are. Ah, is that what you were saying? Yes, yes, it is. Did you want to say any more in understanding? No. Thank you very much. Any ladies over there? We've got uh, Chintamani and Atma. <laughs> have, a go, have a go, Atma. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Every time I hear <laughs> when a person is fully engaged in devotional service, there is a confusion in my mind immediately. And I think, oh, I'm so useless. <laughs> what kind of service? All my God brothers and God sisters, they're doing so much, I do nothing. I'm useless. So, oh, I'm hopeless. But then comes in mind the instructions that I've gotten through the years by the spiritual master and the devotees. And it's eight processes of devotional service. Eight. And that's the... Oh, nine. Sorry. Nine. There's nine <laughs> processes of devotional <laughs> service. That's okay. <laughs> and so it's also remembering, praying, everything, every little bit we do for Krishna every day, even if we think a little bit, anything we do for Krishna every day, Krishna never forgets. And that calms me down and gives me hope that I can continue. And I am not completely lost, uh, lost of hope. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank That's you. very nice. Thank Did you want to understand as well? Thank you. So she's passed it over here. <laughs> so when it says a person is fully engaged uh, in devotional service, I understand this is almost a paraphrase of 10.9. It's a similar point being made in the Bhagavad Gita. Machita matgata prana bodhain tascha parasparam katayin tascha mamnicham tushanti cha ramanticha. So his mind, is, his mind with his, the, the thoughts of my pure devotees always dwell in me. And um, he's always engaged in enlightening and conversing about me and taking great delight in this activity. Let me just find the actual verse. It says... 
and the thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me. Their lives are fully devoted to my service, and they derive great satisfaction and bliss from always enlightening one another and conversing about me. So with his mind, his thoughts are always with Krishna. His life, whatever he's doing, his, as, uh, as um, oh my God, I forget, Prabhupada, Bhakti Siddhanta's father, I guess. Bhakti yeah. Thakur you know, yeah. said, you know, that song, he says, body, mind, and family, all that I own. So his home he dedicates to Krishna, his family he dedicates to Krishna, his work he dedicates to Krishna, he uses the fruit of everything. And with his words, he's always enlightening and conversing about Krishna and taking great delight in this. So that's what I understand about being fully engaged in devotional service, body, mind, and words. Okay. All so, the time, so you don't have breaks from the bliss. It's not like you're doing it, you know, for like five, six hours, and then you have to watch a movie or something like that. No, this is where you get your <laughs> five, great delight hours, from. It's pretty good going. <laughs> okay. No, you're saying, um, so fully engaged, you're understanding that um, to be described in the Gita, in, in Machita, Maka 10, 9, uh, Prana, Bodhyanta, Prasparam. So, always enlightening one another and, uh, you know, discussing, hearing and chanting together in Krishna consciousness um, is, is the first thing, uh, which should result in um, what you're, you're saying, manasa deha geha, you're, you're quoting uh, back to an otak or well, that's part body, of, mind and that's, work. Yeah, that's part of it, because see, their lives are fully devoted to my service. Their lives are fully devoted, so that means body, mind and words. Yes, everything. So, everything, so body... Whatever I possess is yours, Krishna. I, I look after my house because it's your house. And you, I, I service. look after my family because they, they're yours, yeah. And, and mind, mind is always absorbed always, yes. and words are always glorifying. Yes. So the rest of the uh, thing, it's fully engaged. He's favored by the Lord who bestows his causeless mercy. So that I understand is very, putting very succinctly 10, 11, and 12, um, which is to show them special mercy, I dwelling in their hearts. Destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. Oh, and 10.10 and ten, ten was, To those who are constantly devoted to serving me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. To show them special mercy, I dwelling in their hearts. Destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. So causeless mercy means he always is guiding them, their intelligence, what to do and how to do it, so that whatever they do, whatever they say, whatever they possess will progress them towards him, and he removes their forgetfulness, uh, any ignorance, any um, fallibility to act separately from him. So that's, I understand, his cause is mercy, which is repeated in 10.10 10 and 11 of the Gita. Okay. So what does it mean that he bestows his causeless mercy? So in the Bhagavad Gita, he tells us that, so those who are constantly devoted and worship me with love, I give the intelligence by which they can come to me in 10.10. 10. So... Dadami Buddha Yogam, um, that means uh, he, he you know, en enables us to uh, know what to do, what not to do, how to serve him. And Jnana uh, Bhashvata Deepika, by the shining lamp of knowledge, he destroys the ignorance in our hearts. So you're always thinking of seeing Krishna. So you're always... So removing the curtains, destroying that ignorance, and that means removing the curtain that prevents us from seeing him, the curtain of illusion. We yeah. see, like, is it in the sixth chapter of the Gita, um, the person who sees um, the, um, the, the envious, the friend, the mediator, all with an equal mind? Mm. Why? Because they just see Krishna. If someone insults them, they see Krishna. If someone is kind to them, they see Krishna. So when he removes that ignorance, he removes the seeing in duality. Mm. We see Krishna's hand everywhere okay. at that point. So, yeah, so what does it look like um, when the, the Lord uh, bestows his mercy and um, destroys our ignorance? We no longer see duality. We don't see I like and I don't like, I want, I don't want, you know, and uh, in terms of what's pleasing to me or displeasing to me. Uh, rather, we see Krishna's hand in everything um, and that, you know, everything is good. Everything is that the Lord is always acting uh, for my benefit, and he simply sees how to engage everything in Krishna's service yes. rather than his own service. Thank you. And the awakened devotee, I understand, is the devotee described in 3.18, the self-realized soul. So he says we become self-realized once we are this machita madgata prana. We have to be this machita madgata prana, bodhain tascha, parasparam, 
kata and tashamam nicham devotee, in order to become self-realized. That if we're not always hearing, if our thoughts are not always with him, if we're not fully serving him with our body and all our possessions, and, and if we're not always enlightening one another and conversing about him, then we're not a self-realized soul. We're not a fully awakened devotee. And we still have to do our duties. But if we are this machita, then we are self-realized. And then the, 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 we don't need to do the duties. We'll only do them if the Lord asks us to. And because we're able to see Krishna, because he removes the ignorance that stops us seeing him, we'll know what he wants us to do. Okay. So um, at, at that time, the awakening devotee gives up all material activity. And, and so um, we have to be, you're saying, constantly hearing and chanting, remembering and, and discussing about Krishna. When we're that, that devotee that's described in the beginning in 10.9, um, then, um, you know, then we're able to uh, you know, get that mercy from Krishna and then uh, we, we rise above the, the you know, material platform. We don't, we're no longer obliged to do duties because we have no material attachments. Because duties are done because we have an attachment, we want to enjoy the material world, so therefore there's a responsibility that goes with that. But when you no longer have desires for material enjoyment, then you, you don't need to do the duties. But you may still do the duties if you establish, if you ascertain that that's what Krishna wants you to do, as in the case, obviously, of Arjuna. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, and here's in the same purport, the next line. Um, when one is engaged in devotional service, he is no longer attracted to material activities. So this is a simple one. Anyone like to understand that? What does that mean? Um, second time, Priya Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you for a wonderful class. As always, very detailed and analytical. <laughs> when Mother Chintamani was talking earlier on just now, my practical sort of mind went across to the uh, instructions by Ambarish Maharaj, where he says that you, you know, engage our words in glorifying the Lord. Let's try and get the, the exact uh, details. Um, Yes, it's gone. And the, you know, when he's saying how, how you, you use our feet to tr you know, walk to the temple of the Lord, we smell the tulsi on, uh, um, on the Lord's uh, feet and actually attracts us. So my practical mind went across to that instructions when you were saying these uh, uh, special, mm. special mantras from the Bhagavad Gita. In this particular verse, I wasn't preparing for this one, but I just wanted to comment on that. That's on a, on a practical sure. level we could actually apply those instructions by Ambrish Maharaj for our mm -hmm. purposes, for de engaging ourselves in devotional service. Yeah, so you're just remarking that Chintamani was saying how we have to be constantly engaged, and, and, uh, and you, you remembered Savai Manak Krishna Padaravindo, yeah, exactly. that, that verse by Ambrish, um, about Ambrish, how he engaged all of his senses in the Lord's service. As, a, as an example of that, someone who's fully engaged, yeah. And do you want to try and understand that? that we can line try. On that? We can try, yes. Okay. When one is engaged in devotional service, again, the similar sort of theme continues here in terms of engagement in devotional service, he's no longer attracted to material activities. So now we've been talking around th throughout this class today about our engagement in material activities. May that be for our own, you know, karmi way or jnani way or in a different way in terms of spiritual activities. Um, so material activities, spiritual activities, the distinction between the two. Um, and then obviously our engagement in devotional service takes many facets depending on our level of uh, devotion and the le level of uh, the type of devotee we are, whether we are madhyam, uh, uttama or... Uh, so it will depend on how we are engaging in devotional service, that's how my understanding is. So uh, again, you know, I, whenever I read something, I'll, I'll, I'll try and understand it from a, its philosophical point of view, 
but also from its practical point of view as to how we can apply it in sort of our lives on a day-to-day -day activity in order to serve the Lord uh, like that. So that's a few thoughts that come into my mind. Okay. So material activities, you're saying maybe karma or gyan or moksha, activities aimed at achieving those results, that selfish, basically, that you want something. And devotional service, you're saying that has different levels of practice. Um, so sadhana bhakti or bhava bhakti or whatever it may be. So you, you understand there may be different levels um, involved in that. But when you're doing that devotional service, you lose interest in the karma, jnana, and siddhi, moksha, whatever it may be. Yeah? Thank you, Prabhu. Um, anyone on the ladies' side like to uh, have a go at this? My wife's getting all the nectar. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Thank you, Mataji. Uh, so, Prabhuji, to my mind, this is like a simple verse. It's like kind of self-explanatory that one, when one is engaged in devotional service, he is no longer attracted to material activities. It's like I have seen, uh, many people have told me, I have seen in the life of many of my devotee friends, initially when we begin, we, are, we have attachment to many material activities like you know um, talking from a very neophyte level uh, watching movies many of my friends said that they really enjoyed meat eating they were, that they were not able to give up Prabhu, in Prabhupada Leela Amrita we talk about people who were into drugs and all sorts of addictions like and myself I always enjoy like I always was too much into my karma like I really enjoyed studying hard and you know getting good grades in my exams and doing well at work and um, I, I just wanted to be you know I'm a surgeon so I just wanted to be the best surgeon that existed and those kinds of things but over a period of time as we engage in devotional service it's like cheto dan par marjanam happens like whatever our level is many of my friends told me they loved movies but after they started devotional service they don't enjoy it anymore. Mm. Same for meat eating and we see from the examples of devotees, addictions and for myself I've seen it in terms of occupational material activities. It's For me it's not like I'm not a surgeon anymore, I'm still a surgeon but that motivation that I wanted to do things because I wanted to be great has changed that I tried to serve patients seeing Krishna in them. So we kind of, once we engage in devotional service automatically that attraction to material activities will go and we will we may not as Mataji said we may not give them up completely but we may do them for a higher cause seeing uh, and hence even do them in a better way for the society in general because we are not working out of motiva lower motivations like greed and ego thank you okay yeah, yeah you're, you're saying that um, you know many examples of people who've taken to back to including yourself who were previously very much attached to material things um, watching movies or even eating meat or you know all kinds of stuff but once they take to practicing Krishna consciousness he said the cheto uh, the heart becomes purified uh, and the interest subsides they're no longer interested and your example also was you know very much uh, um, attached to doing your studies and things and furthering your material career but now you've taken to practicing Krishna consciousness um, you, know, you, know, you know that selfish desire that material desire is not so strong uh, and now you're thinking you know how to act instead to please the Lord to you know please the spiritual master so um, that's the effect of doing bhakti of doing devotional service thank you uh, what was your name? Ishita, Ishita. thank you Ishita Mataji did, anyone, did you want to? No? Yeah, I understood it, but it very similarly. And also, you, you can understand it the other way around, in that if I'm still attracted to material activities, am I engaged in devotional service? Because the two things seem to be mutually exclusive. Prabhupada's saying when one is engaged in devotional service, he's not attracted to material activities. So if I find myself attracted and I'm, you know, like wanting to watch movies or, or talk nonsense with someone or whatever it may be, um, then that, that would seem to say that I'm not engaged in devotional service. So, um, 
It can't be both. <laughs> it's one or the other. <clears throat> so what, what am I doing? I'm aspiring to become a devotee. I'm still, at this point, becoming purified, uh, and I'm not yet on that platform of being a, a Vaishnav or a devotee, because devotees have no interest in the material world. That's what I get from this. Um, I, I've got more here. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I wanted to thank Mataji for a really nice explanation. That was really helpful for me. Thank you. And on your point that, um, well, if I'm still attracted, that mm. means I'm not doing devotional service. I'm trying. Yeah. I, I just wanted to add a little to that, if I may. Okay. That um, Prabhupada says a similar thing, but not with attracted. He says, uses the phrase happy. If you're not happy, then you're not doing properly. Uh, you have to rectify. So similarly, if we're attracted to material activities, we may be doing devotional service, but we may not be properly. Sometimes we can do things fanatically without correct understanding. You know, so um, that's one thing I wanted to say. And, and the second thing I want to say, there's a purport in the Bhagavatam, I don't know if you're able to help me find it, where Prabhupada says, without hearing sufficiently and properly, uh, all one's other activities will not be useful. He uses yeah. that phrase, sufficiently and properly. 2216, I think it is. Two, two, maybe, yeah. um, let me just see. Um, and, okay, I can also look it up, 2216. So, um, and I, I, I just wanted to share a little thought about that, hearing sufficiently and properly. Like, uh, some of us, I think Mataji is coming from a very mode of goodness background. I know myself, I was coming from a very tamasic and rajasic background. So what is sufficient and proper hearing for me, I may need a much higher dose. And what is sufficient and proper hearing for someone who's already very situated in sattva guna, they may not need quite a high dose. So it's a, we have to kind of, like, it's just like um, home, you know, with medicines, you, you have to take the dose which is going to help you. If you're attracted to material activity still, which I know I am, but I have to look at my, how, am I sufficiently and properly hearing and mm. chanting? Okay. If not, let me up that my dosage. And if I'm not attracted to material activities, then my dosage is probably okay. I'm probably <laughs> doing enough hearing and chanting. Okay. Yeah, so you're saying, um, you started by quoting Prabhupada. Prabhupada says if we're not happy, uh, then something's going wrong. We should be happy if we're doing bhakti, so we need to rectify. So then you're exploring, well, what do we need to rectify? Um, well, hearing and chanting, how much of that are we doing? Because you call that a dosage. You know, if, we're, if we're hearing and chanting sufficiently, then the, um, the result should be that our material fever subsides and we're no longer you know, frantically trying to enjoy the material world. And you cited the evidence here, which is I've got in front of me. Um, is it 2216? No, it's 2236. So Prabhupada says this, without hearing sufficiently and properly, no one can make any progress by any of the, any of the methods of practice. So, um, but of, but of out, out of all the nine different methods, the first one, namely hearing, is the most important function in the process of back to yoga. So, you know, we may be thinking, well, I'm working very hard for Krishna by doing so many things with my body. But if we're not doing sufficient hearing, then that will be karmic activity. We'll be doing that with a desire for some kind of result. You know, maybe I'm going out and selling books, but I'm thinking, I'll be the best. I'll be the top. I'll get the prize. I know when I was doing it, I wanted to win the prize and go to India because the top prize for winning the marathon was a trip to India. So, you know, or, or just to get the, you know, just get the glorification or, um, you know, or, or whatever it may be. Or, or it may be more subtle. You know, it may not be so gross that you're like, I, I want people to recognize me. That, that may well be there. It may just also be, I don't want to suffer in this material world anymore. I want to get free of suffering. So in other words, that's, that's, you're tinged with jnana. You, 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 you have a desire for moksha, for liberation from suffering. Because devotee doesn't think like that. Devotee doesn't care. 
He's like Narayana Paraksaravay Nakutashtana Bibiti Svarga Apavarga Narakeshu. They don't care if they go to hell, Apitulyata Darshana, as long as they're able to serve the Lord. So, you know, this, I think this is what we're saying here that um, our work may not be bhakti. We may think it is. It may externally we think we're doing devotional service because we're doing some voluntary work or we're doing something in the temple or whatever it may be that ostensibly looks like bhakti but what matters is the motive is the heart is why we're doing it um, and how can we change that how can we change the motive so that we're doing it for the right reason that we're actually trying to please Krishna and Prabhupada's telling us here without hearing sufficiently and properly you cannot make progress by any of the other methods of practice. So, you know, that's the first thing we have to do. And, and the test, as you were saying, is am I feeling happy? Am I feeling fulfilled? Am I enjoying this? Or is it drudgery? Is it like, oh, I'll do it, but, you know, when I get an opportunity, I need to relax. And how do I relax? I go to the cinema. You know, I, I, I watch YouTube or I download movies or something, you know. To, that's my relaxation. I, I go and hang out with my mates and we have a laugh and a joke and we talk nonsense. You know, so that means that we're not getting that taste, we're not getting that fulfillment from bhakti. We, we don't need a break from the bliss, as you mentioned earlier. That we need to find some, some recreation, which is not bhakti. So if we're still there, then we need to up the dosage of hearing and chanting. Or you know, in, improve it. it. It may be that, like, it probably gave us the formula of an hour in the morning, an hour in the evening, uh, which most of us don't do. <laughs> We're lucky if we do an hour in the morning, half an hour in the morning. But something every day should be there. Um, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Sevaya. Well, we may be doing that, but still we're not getting the result. So that may be because the quality of the hearing and chanting is not sufficient. And that's what we're trying to stress here, that how do we improve that quality? By not just passive hearing or passive reading. I sit down with the book and, you know, I, I remember uh, when I was a, a young brown I was doing so much work that I'd read. And every time I was reading, I'd find myself in this position after about 30 seconds, you know. I just was incapable of reading. You know, instantly I would just go straight to sleep. It's so difficult to do that by yourself. <laughs> And, um, you know, or the words, you know, we're not really taking in what Prabhupada's saying. You can see today we've had a demonstration of just a few things, like a few sentences, and, and how when we really start to think about it, we realize, oh, do I, I don't actually know what that means. Or, or you know, or, or, we, or we think about it and then we think, oh, I see what he's saying. And we go more deeply into it and, and the meaning comes out. And we get the jewels and the nectar that is all there in Prabhupada's teachings. And we start to get a taste, you know, because Satang Prashangam Mamavirya Sambhidu, that when we are doing this process of associating together and discussing the books, Bhavanti Hritkana, Rasayana Kata, we get that taste, our heart is satisfied with the rasa that we're looking for, the juice, the taste the, of, of the nectar of Krishna consciousness. So it either improved the quantity, but certainly improved the quality is the answer if we're not getting the result. If we're not getting the causeless mercy, the causeless mercy means detachment, losing interest in the material world, no longer hankering, no longer lamenting over things that go wrong. You know, we don't see anything going wrong. Nothing goes wrong for a devotee because everything's Krishna. Everything's happening by his will. And, and we accept it like that, that it's... It's meant for my good, you know. So if we're not seeing like that and we're not experiencing that detachment, then we need to in, improve the sadhana, sadhana. So we actually reached nine o'clock. I, I don't know if anyone has any last points or questions um, before we stop. Otherwise we can say, Jai, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you very much, Prabhupada. Hare Krishna.